Hey, I'm in my uh, workshop today. I'm uh, working on a Microsoft Band. I ordered a couple of these Microsoft Bands online, and uh, three of them are in retail demo mode. Now, uh, a good long search on the internet revealed that um, there's no way to get these things out of retail demo mode, which I have my gripes on Microsoft for that, because uh, all the retail stores have pulled these off the shelves. So these demo units that were sitting on the shelf at all the retail stores, they're making their way into consumer hands. And I bought a couple of them on eBay, hoping that I could find a way to uh, force the proper software onto it or something. No such luck. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to tear down the Microsoft Band. And I have a destroyed unit here that uh, no longer charges. And we're going to see if it's uh, the main board or if it's the battery in the band itself. So I'm gonna take my retail demo here, that's stuck in retail demo, there's nothing I could do about it. And I'm going to take the uh, logic board out of this one and replace it with this logic board that I removed from a damaged retail unit. So th this, this unit here that I, took, that I took it out of, this was a, just a regular retail unit uh, Microsoft Band. I'm going to be using its supposedly good logic board. We'll find out if the charging circuits on the logic board, if that's bad, or if it was just the battery or the traces in the band itself that are bad. So, first things first, I'm going to show you how to tear down this Microsoft Band 2. Turn it off. And let's get to work. The tools that you will be needing to complete this job. A hot air gun. A T2 Torx screwdriver. A T3 Torx screwdriver. Sharp pair of tweezers is always nice. A plastic spudger to disconnect connectors and a thinnest as you can find flathead screwdriver. The thinnest blade you could absolutely find. And some type of pry tool, dental tool for pulling the glass out of the frame. Okay, so first thing we need to do is remove the screen. So we're going to have to get some heat on the screen, and uh, that's what's going to release the um, adhesive a little bit so we can get it out. So what I did here, I took my nozzle off of my hot air gun, so it's a nice wide even spread of uh, hot air. And the hot air is set to 200, 202. But as anybody playing with hot air knows, set temperature doesn't really matter much. What matters is how long and how far away you hold it, how long you keep it on and how far away you hold it from it. So we don't want to overheat this thing. We just want to heat it enough, like it was sitting out in the sun for a couple hours on a nice hot day. That, that's about how hot you want it. You still want to be able to touch this thing but you want it to have a nice good amount of heat. I apologize for camera angles and all that. I'm new to this content creation stuff. I'll eventually get all my camera angles and stuff like that down. So That's pretty hot. The rest of the unit. You want some of the heat to transfer into the aluminum case too because the aluminum is just going to wick away all the heat from the screen and from the adhesive. Yeah, it feels hot enough. So now we're just going to take a pry tool here. Nice dental type pry tool. And try to get right underneath the screen. and pry up on it. And I want 
to get my pointy one out of there and go for the nice flat one after I get it started. Just be nice and gentle with it. And watch the flex cable. You don't want to break that flex cable on the way out. Last little adhesive hanging on there. Let go of you. There you go. Now we're just held on by the flex cable. So now let's come in here with a plastic tool. You don't want to use a metal tool to remove a connector on a board. So you take our plastic spudger, get under the corner, and just pop that connector right up. It'd be better if you didn't drop the screen. And that takes off our screen. Now, the next step is those two screws. One right here, one right here. These are Torx T2 screws. So you need a Torx T2 driver. And we'll go ahead and take those two out. Now that's the first part of the logic board. Then there's a flex that connects to the rest of the logic board here. And there's a lot of connectors right here. So let's start just taking out each connector at a time. See, there's a lot of caps right by this connector. If you're not careful, you'll wind up popping one of these tiny little caps off of here. Now we have two RF connectors. Coaxial connectors. Now these next two screws that hold it in, so there's some kind of uh, threaded standoff things that the other screws went into. They're really, really small. I, I had a hard time finding a screwdriver to fit it. But finally I found this old uh, Stanley pocket screwdriver and the, the blade of the screwdriver is thin enough to get right in there. I almost used, uh, before I found the screwdriver, I was about to use a scalpel blade. That's how small this is. Now we could lift the board out of the frame, but you got to be careful with it because it's kind of glued in by the, I think that's the uh, heart rate monitor in the back there. And that that's, uh, has a gasket around it that's kind of gluing it in there. So kind of difficult to get, oh wait. And then there's one other screw right over here. This one's a, not a T3, this one's a, or not a T2, this one's a T3. Right here in this side. I forgot about that one. And it has a little bracket that's pushing down on the board. Now we can pry the board from the frame. 
Let's see, where's a good place to pry this from? What am I looking at? I want to make sure I don't knock anything off on the bottom of the board, so I'll tell you where to pry on it. There's a connector right there where I was prying. So anywhere other than there. Beautiful. There's a no stuff in the top corner, so let's go for that top corner where the no stuff is. And there you go. That's this is the demo logic board. This is what this what has the demo software on it. So we'll just put that to the side because as far as it is now, that is junk until some developer decides to uh, crack these things and be able to get this regular software on it. And look at this underneath the microscope later. Or the other one, anyway. Right, let's start putting it back together. This is the retail board going into the demo frame. So let's put those standoff screws in. Oh, wait, no, I want to use the, the same screws from the same frame. This is from the other frame. So let's use these. So the standoffs first. These standoffs sit nicely in the screwdriver blade. Just push it in there and they'll stay in nice. A little crooked so that's going to Make it more difficult to uh, thread in. That's okay. Just be careful with it. And again, I apologize for the video. I see my. I'm just using a phone on a tripod and it's not focusing all too well. That board doesn't really look straight to me by that other hole, so I'm going to loosen this one up a little bit and just see if I can make it completely straight. Let's check the alignment of that LED and receiver. That does not really look right. Let's see. It did move a bunch. I doubt you can see this through the phone, but that looks better. Definitely don't over tighten any of this stuff. Now let's uh, seat some connectors. normally don't like using a tool to see connectors if I can avoid it. I like using my finger so you can feel how it's forcing back at you. If one side's forcing back than the other. Sorry, I 
realized you couldn't see any of that. RF connector next. What I'm doing here is straightening it so that it's facing straight at the connector. I've seen plenty of these in phones where somebody crushed down one of the sides of the ground circle on the board. For how small these things are, they're always they always take an uncomfortable amount of pressure to get them back in. Never like those things. Okay, let's put that other hold down bar and screw in. It's gonna be tricky. It's not going to stay on this. The magnet. I know it's a comically large magnet. I guess it's not magnetic. Yes, it is. Why isn't it sticking? There you go. It's facing the complete wrong way. RF cables in the way. have to put this in a different way. It needs to go in its position as it goes down. flat to the board. I don't know how this is going to look on a computer screen rather than my little phone screen. Tighten that down. Okay. Rest of the connectors. I wish I knew which one was power. I would make sure I do that one last. Well, 
experiment with the other board, figure it out. Okay, one last RF connector. Oh, jeez. Okay, that's everything underneath the board. Tell me one's longer than the other. No, they're the same. That went down to the bottom, felt like a long screw. Oh, that's fine. Peel that captain tape out of the way. Jeez, this thing doesn't sit straight before you go in. Okay, I got the band back together. Now for the screen. Okay, let's see if it actually turns on. Vibrate it. 
Oh, wow. So there you go. We went from a demo unit to a, we took the logic board out of a broken band that wouldn't charge anymore. And we took the demo unit logic board out, put the broken band logic board in. And now we have a working band. So I'm going to go ahead and try to glue this screen back down. And it's not going to turn off until I finish, isn't it? I'll force a turn off. Okay, let's see if we can reattach the screen. warm it up some. Now this, this you got to be careful with this. Because now it's disconnected. The screen's just hanging out there in the middle of nowhere. It's going to get a lot hotter a lot faster. You have to be aware of that. And that is hot. That is really hot. I could barely hold on to it. Ah, uh, ow. Where's a rag? I'm using my shirt. Right now I'm using my shirt to push down on it. Sorry, you can't see that on camera. Okay. It seems like a proper... F nope, it's coming right back up. Okay. I'm going to try a little bit more heat. And I need a rag ready to push down on it with... For anybody who's trying this at home, I take no responsibility for you burning yourself. Wear gloves. I don't want to see anything in the comments that, oh, I got third degree burns trying your method. Wear gloves. Be careful. Nope. Popped right back up. Okay, so I'm going to have to uh, use some silicone around the edges or something. I'm going to have to do something different to get the glue back on. No, well, that's for uh, another time. But I have a working band when I had no working band before. Okay, I'm going to insert this in the middle of my uncut video. I think I found a good method of... Um, holding this or getting this to uh, glue back together so um, I taped it taped down the screen with some captain tape now I'm gonna apply some heat to it let it get good and hot the the case and everything so that maybe that that glue will re-adhere and uh, then I'll let it cool down with the captain tape on and then remove it so let's give this a try
Uh oh. I heated that too much. I see a wrinkle in the LCD. I may have just destroyed this LCD. No, I have an extra. I will find out. See if I see any kind of wrinkle like that. No, I may have just destroyed that LCD. I'm gonna let this cool down and uh, I'll come back to it. Now let's see if it charges. Let me get the charger out, see if it charges. I don't think it's really going to show me that it's charging, is it? Until I pair it. Well, I'll update it in the comments if, uh, if anything bad happens along the way. Well, I hope you learned something. Thanks for watching. Just a quick update after the fact. The captain tape taping down the screen and then heating it. That worked out fine. There is a wrinkle in the LCD screen. I have no idea if I could get the... Yeah, you can kind of see that there's a wrinkle in the LCD screen. You see how the light shatters off of it right there, that little wrinkle at the bottom right there. It doesn't affect the look of the screen. screen still looks fine, still works fine, and I have a fully working band now. Thanks for watching.